Right, if you have a Myford ML7 or the Super 7 lathe and you use these Dixon type quick change tool posts, um, you'll know that you're very limited to what size um, shank you can use, particularly on the turning side. And that's because when the tool holder goes onto the tool post, the actual holder won't go down far enough to be able to achieve the correct centre height of the tool. I think 8mm is the maximum you can use with this um, in this design. So in this video I'm going to show you an easy modification you can do on this tool holder which will allow you to use the maximum shank tool which is about 13mm and still have enough room to go down. Now in looking at the Myford ML7 compound slide um, Dixon type tool post and the holder goes on and when it goes down the underside is clashing with this face here on the compound slide and it's only at the very back that is clashing um, about 10 millimeter in from the back of the tool holder So what needs to be done is this section at the back here um, needs to be removed a bit by about 3, three millimetre depth and um, about 12 millimetre in from the back face. And I've seen information on the internet where people have had these um, ground away um, the whole of the underside um, and that's completely unnecessary uh, and it also thins this section here and weakens the tool post. And if you haven't got access to a grinder to do this, um, there's no need to worry about that. And that is because if you get a file and on the underside at the back here, um, you run that file over that section on the corner a few times you'll see that it clearly marks that edge there and that means that this steel can be milled and I found that all the um, Dixon tool posts that I bought recently they say that they're hardened and ground but they're all about this um, hardness and they can all be milled the ones that were produced in the past were a lot harder than the modern ones, I've noticed. Um, but that's still no problem um, because you can actually heat them up with a propane torch um, to nearly red hot. Let them cool at room temperature and then they will be annealed enough and soft enough to actually mill. And I've actually tested doing that on a really hard one of these tool holders. Um, I heated it up with my propane torch, um, nearly red hot, and just let it cool naturally. And I put it on my lathe and done the machining on it um, quite successfully. And if you want to, at the end of machining, you can actually reheat them again, red hot, quench them in oil, and that rehardens them. But I found that unnecessary. But like I say, all the ones I've bought recently are soft enough to mill. And if you've only got a hard set of these um, tool holders and you want to do this um, modification, it's just best to buy one of these um, off of eBay. A cheap one off eBay and use it just for this purpose. So this is one that I've milled and you can see that it's nicely removed that section there and when this goes on the um, tool holder it goes much further down And I'm able to achieve the centre height on this 12mm shank tool easily and there's still room enough to go down further. So you can actually use the full shank size of about 13mm and there's plenty of room to get the actual correct centre height. 
Also on this tool holder you'll see that I've remade the height adjustment components. I've um, drilled out the existing 5mm thread in the tool holder and re-tapped it for 6mm thread which is much more sturdy. 6mm is about the maximum you can use. There's still enough wall thickness there and it won't break through this back face. So now I've put a long 6mm stud in there and screwed it right the way down and that one be, will be locked into that um, thread. And um, then I've remade this um, height adjuster. I've made it much larger than the old one so it's much more sturdy. The old one is made too small particularly on this flange diameter here. And you can see that when I put the old one on to the tool holder it is only just um, landing on that face there, the location face, and it's um, only just clipping that um, by about a millimetre. So like I say, the, this one here is the maximum size and it will only just go on but lands on that um, face much better and is much more positive and locks up much more positive at the correct centre height. So that's what it looks like now. You can see that it's got a nice flange right into that groove and now I'll put the old one on And you can see before I lock it up, it's only just clipping that edge and has a tendency of falling down over that flange there. So this one's much more positive and nicer to use. Also on this new one, I put a lock nut on the top here so that when I get the centre height set correctly I can lock that one up and it won't move like the old ones had a tendency of doing. So if you've watched any of my other videos you'll know that I haven't got a milling machine so I'd like to just show you the setup I've used on the MyFed ML7 um, to do this milling operation. So this is my setup on my MyFred ML7 to do the milling on the um, tool post. I have the MyFred milling slide with a small vise bolted to the front of that one. Um, my collet chuck with a four flue end mill which is large enough to do the width of the cut on the tool holder in one go. And um, I have my adjustable stop on the saddle which I use in conjunction with a clock at the back and this clock um, is zeroed on a piece of bar which is um, bolted onto the um, place where the thread dial indicator goes and I can use that to take the saddle in by increments of 10 thou at a time, take 10 thou cuts and safely do the milling on the tool holder. So I've taken all the screws off the tool holder and put that one in the vise so that it's clear. Lock it up. I've set the um, slide at the correct height and when I'm doing milling um, across ways I lock the screws to lock the um, gib strip on the um, actual slide. So then I zero the tool on the tool holder put the stop up against the saddle and lock that. Wind it over so it's clear again. And set the clock on zero. And 
and then I can use the um, stop adjuster and the clock to move the tool in by 10 thou and then I lock the saddle I use cutting oil on the bit and I'm going to use 300 rpm So if you're new to machine work on the lathe and actually milling on the machine make sure that when you're doing the cut that you do it from the back to the front never from the front to the back because if there's any um, backlash in the actual screw on the cross slide it will cause the uh, tool to snatch that and drag it forward and possibly break your actual um, milling cutter. So now I move it in another 10 thou. Lock the cross slide. wind it nice and slow to do the car.
and you keep machining it like that until you're about three mil deep so this is the finished tool holder um, I put a nylock nut on the top there stainless steel one with a nylon insert which makes it even better it's much more sturdy much more positive to use locks up nicely and this one's set on center height um, but I've still got two millimeter gap at the um, on the underside so it can go um, a further two millimeter down. So it's a really good upgrade to do on the tool post and it um, gives you the versatility to use the tool post to its full potential. And now I can use um, homemade tools like this one here. I've got a nice thick carbide insert and silver soldered it to a piece of mild steel bar and when I put that in the tool post I won't have any problem getting the centre height. So I hope you enjoyed the video and see how easy it is to upgrade this um, Dixon type tool post and um, like I say if you buy a modern new cheap um, tool holder it should be soft enough to machine like I've shown without having to anneal it.